words. Robot trains. Anyway, I'm joined now by rail expert Len Shackleton from the Institute of Economic Affairs. Len, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. I think it looks as though unless we fork out a load of cash, we're going to have to face down massive strike action. Is it feasible to give in to some of Mick Lynch's demands or would it just bankrupt us all? I think he's deluding himself to think that the public are, uh, you know, supporting him. Um, the, the, you know, the railways have been uh, supported massively by, by the public over the last two or three years. Uh, billions of pounds, even before we, um, we went into lockdown and so forth, we were spending about 12 billion a year on, uh, operate, you know, on, on supporting the operation of trains plus the investment in the railways. Um, and of course, nobody lost their jobs or suffered a, a, a loss of pay during the during the lockdown on the railways. Uh, so this is a privileged group of people. The Office of Rail and Road has just published an interesting report which suggests that they're paid about nine percent more on average than comparable workers, right down the list, you know, from the top level right down to to cleaners and so forth. So this is not a, a, an underprivileged group that we should uh, th make a special case for. To me, Len, as an economic expert, is people in the private sector are not getting pay rises in line with inflation. The majority of them, you would assume, are not. If the public sector do, or people who are on the railways, etc., get a pay rise in line with inflation, is it people like you and I who are paying for that? Well, we're going, to, we're going to have to pay higher taxes. We know that at the moment. But to, to add to this by giving inflationary pay settlements to uh, to the public sector and a few private sector groups which are particularly well organised. But just remember that the trade union movement now only uh, only covers about twenty three percent of the workforce. So it's, it's a minority of the workforce. And uh, to to uh, uh, privilege this group simply because it's got the power to 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 make life uncomfortable for us for a bit, um, but I think I you know I think they uh, they're exaggerating their powers. I think every week that goes by, people are learning to live without the railways, and if they're not careful, uh, they're going to have when when this is eventually settled, they're going to have a much smaller railway and a need for a lot of uh, job cuts and so forth, which I'm sure Mick Lynch doesn't want. I think a lot of people might have a lot more sympathy for them if the service that they provided was actually any good. I mean, every single day when I go to get on a train, there's some kind of delay or the toilet is blocked or, goodness gracious me, there's all sorts of stuff going on. I mean, trying to get on the Avanti West Coast Line, you've got a better chance of travelling by homing pigeon, trying to get from Cheshire back to London and stuff. I mean, it is pretty shocking, the actual service, I think, a lot of them uh, that they yeah. provide. Uh, I, I mean, what... What would the cost be if we had to... I mean, it's probably impossible to quantify, Len, I don't know. But if we had to just bear up to, you know, a, a nation without half of its trains running from now and again, is it a cost worth bearing? Is that cheaper than it is to give in to their pay demands? Well, that's a very difficult one to call, Patrick. But uh, let, me, let me just say, to be a, a, a little bit more even-handed on this, I mean, the government has made a right pig's ear of their attempt to uh, reform the railways. This... Uh, thing, Great British Railways, which we were promised in the Shaps Williams report, if you remember that, it's about three transport secretaries back. Uh, you know, that uh, nothing has been done about that. We're now told that we won't get legislation on it this side of the general election. Um, it, it's clear, you know, they, they've, they've put in a, a team of not particularly prominent politicians to run it, Mark Harper and so forth. Uh, you know, they, they obviously haven't got a, a, a priority in sorting the railways out. And really, this is partly down to the government, whatever you think of the, of the, yeah. the, the rail unions, which, uh, you know, but I think the government has to do something about it fairly yeah. quickly. Can I ask quickly, Len, uh, 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 is it fair when people say, you know, that uh, the Labour Party are in the union's back pocket on stuff like this? Because people might be concerned, well, would it actually get worse if Labour were in? Because they, the unions have more sway with them and Labour couldn't, you know, annoy the unions too much. They'd have to give in to it. Is there any truth to all of that? Well, I, I mean, the, the, uh, the Labour Party will attempt to sort of re-nationalise formally the railways. They've done in Scotland. 
But whether that will, uh, in the long run, improve matters for people working in the rail industry, I, you know, I rather doubt. Uh, one of the ways in which the, uh, the rail unions have managed to achieve quite a bit over the last few years is by competition amongst train operating companies. Mm. Once that goes, there'll be, you know, it'll, it'll be just the government deciding everything, and, uh, and that it will be problematic.